Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity may contain explicit and questionable content. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual podcaster Rebecca Adams and are not based on the advice of a licensed therapist, psychologist, or psychiatrist. Listener discretion is strongly advised. What does ponder actually mean? Well, according to the dictionary, it means think about something carefully, especially before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. Well, as you know, on the Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity podcast episodes, we allow women to share their stories in a non-judgmental way about why they stepped out of their relationships. But there are so many other interesting topics that we all need to learn from and not to judge right away. So let's talk about it now. Let's ponder. Well, hello and welcome to Let's Ponder on Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity. Hope everybody is doing well. And hey, did you listen to the last Let's Ponder I talked about my friend Sarah's mom and how she has been involved online, um, kind of a sweetheart swindler type of a situation where this man has promised her everybody, pretending to be somebody else, he puts up a different picture, um, but says his name is who he really is, and it's just a disaster to the point where she's losing more and more money. Mind you, it's money she doesn't even have. She doesn't even own a house. And so she rents. So maybe that's a good thing because then she wouldn't be taking out equity in her house. Um, But she's, whatever you call it, taking a loan against her own car, um, drained her 401k, even though she has to pay fees. She's taking out loans, etc. So in talking with my friend the other day, she actually sent me some more um, snapshots of the conversations that are going on between her mother and this guy. So I wanted to share those with you. So what they say, and I'm just kind of reading them as I go here. So bear with me. So he sends over to her. um, Let's see here. Well, first of all, uh, there he sent something. And her response was, just don't have money before I have savings and I give it to you, but you take everything and no more. So I think what she was trying to say, she just doesn't have any money before she had savings and she had given it all to him, but she thinks he's taken all she has or he has taken everything and she has nothing left. Um, And so his response was just for we have to, (laughs) this is hard to read, just for for we to have the money so we will not beg anybody for help once the money is released. And then um, she said, she's asking him, what is your lawyer's name? I've never gotten any messages from him. And he says the name, um, like Kelvin Jackson. And her mom says, I don't have anything from him. And he responded with, okay, I will tell him now. What are you doing now? And she said, I'm working. And he said, okay, when you're free, let me know. To which she responded, but I don't have a long break to talk to him. How about when I go home? And he said, okay, honey, I will let him know. Okay. Mind you, he calls her honey all the time. And then he says this, Honey, the month has come to an end, so please, my love, do something for me, please. You are not like this before. What is going on? You don't want me again? You don't want to come over again? Or you want me to go to jail? All because I'm coming to see you? I gave you the detail. uh, I I gave you detail to my lawyer, and he wrote you, Um, but you did not respond. And her response is clearly, I just don't have the money before. I had savings and I gave it to you, but you've taken everything and I have no more. To which he says, um, 
something about it, it gets cut off just for we to have maybe that's just I don't know. And she says, but I told you, I don't have any money saved. And he said, I know, but I'm in a situation now that you have uh, to join hands to help me out. And she says, how do you want me to help you out? And he said, honey, the month has come to an end. So please, my love, do something, please. Um, I can't see her mom's response, but I can just send what he wrote. So this is him pushing her. So... It says, miss you so much, my darling. How was your night? Hope you are going to work today. And she responded, and again, I don't know what it is. And he said, good, just sitting down in my room thinking what next? And I assume she's like, what are you talking about? Or thinking what? And his response to whatever she said was, because I gave them $23,000. Now I have nothing left with me. All is just to keep my funds saved for me. And then I need to balance them. Their money, is there a plan outside? Again, I don't know what she responded. And he said, you told me you are working, right? So honey, you don't have a plan for me? And whatever she said, he responded with, okay. And then he sends this about claiming my box. You don't want to contribute anything for me so I can get it. I will give you 20% of it, I promise, because you have tried a lot for me. So honey, anything you can use to assist me so that the funds can be out for us, you know we really need money. And um, then she sent a little snapshot of the tiny chat and it said, her response was, but I told you, I don't have any money saved. And all I can see with his is, I know, but I'm in a situation and I don't have anything beyond that. But it just makes me want to puke because he will not take no for an answer. He pushes and pushes and pushes. And it sounds like she's realizing, holy cow, this guy has screwed me over, but she just won't let go of that promise of love. And it's just absolutely heartbreaking. On Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity, I share stories of women who have been unfaithful to their spouse or partner. I provide them with a safe place to be able to explain what happened and why they chose the direction of infidelity. If you have been through this, whether it be because you were unfaithful or you were betrayed, you know that you just can't open the topic for discussion with your family and friends. It can be very lonely to process it all on your own. I know from my own experience when I was being unfaithful, the emotions that can all be too consuming. These reasons are why I chose to create this podcast. I don't condone infidelity, but it happens, and I refuse to place judgment on anyone. But I also feel it is just as important to learn what the husband or partner endures when this truth is revealed. What was it that led him to feel suspicious of her? How did he find out? How did he process all of this and what would he do next? How could he confront her? About five minutes later, I'm still not sleeping, but I hear a conversation on the phone over the music. I heard Becky on the phone, but her voice was different. It had a slower, seductive sound to it with a smile on her face. It wasn't a normal phone voice for her. At this point, I was wide awake and realizing something was going on. When I heard her say, I'm just wearing a bra, I decided to see what the hell was going on out there. I walked out to her in the living room, lying on her back on the carpet, pillow behind her head, phone in one hand and the other hand down her pants. I was stunned. She saw me and froze. She said to the other person on the other end of the phone line, well, my boyfriend is up, so I'm going to let you go. And she hung up. I asked what this was all about. Who was that on the other line? She told me she was talking to her cousin. I said, your cousin asks you what you are wearing often? 
By subscribing to Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity on Patreon, you will get to hear these stories from the husband or partner's point of view as they share their side of the betrayal. Has your wife or partner been unfaithful? Have you not had anybody to really talk to about it? You're not alone. Perhaps you might even want to share your side for the show to help others. Visit rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com and select Patreon to subscribe. Pledges start at $3 a month for the No Judgment tier. Not only do you get two extra stories a month, you get early access to the regular Raw Truth Stories ad-free and my outtakes. When you select the I Love This Podcast tier, which is $5 a month pledge, not only will you receive everything in the No Judgment tier, you will receive a No Judgment bracelet and an acknowledgement on a future Raw Truth episode, first name only with your city and state. So to show how often this happens and the crime behind it, I found an article on chicago.cbslocal.com and it is let's see here when was this december of 15 so it's been a while um a few years but this was back then and it's going to be even more severe now Uh, but the name of the article is sweetheart swindler who convinced elderly man she needed spinal transplant gets eight years in prison So it has her photo and it says a female con artist accused of swindling an elderly man of more than $1.2 million through a variety of ruses, including claims she needed a spinal transplant, will spend the next eight years in prison, Illinois State Police said. Um, Candy Eli, or Ellie, 35 of Chicago, first began victimizing her 86-year-old victim by befriending the man at a restaurant five years ago and baited him into thinking she was a love interest, authorities said. Ellie scammed the man, who was 50 years her senior, out of a car and other items. She also led him into believing she needed money for medical procedures, including cancer treatments and surgery, and even a spinal transplant, police said. Her total alleged take more than $1.2 million. Ellie pleaded guilty last week to one count of theft of more than $500,000. She was sentenced to eight years in the Illinois Department of Corrections, Illinois State Police said. And then police called Ellie the sweetheart swindler. And I think that is the end of it. So it was just a quick little short thing, but eight years for that. And... (sighs) There's got to be some kind of protection, I guess. You know, certain people are just not capable of understanding how these scams can happen. Um, Lonely, older people, and it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. All right, so now we are going to read the story that was sent in, and I don't have a name. So this is Sweetheart Swindler. Story number two. To begin with, there is nobody at this time who knows of this, not even my wife. I go between embarrassment to anger and everything in between. Additionally, and certainly not to make any excuses for my own stupidity, my marriage has been on life support for the last 25 years. Yes, you read that right. From 1998 until roughly 2000, my wife decided to become a firefighter slash EMT. That too came out of nowhere, as and as close as I can describe it, it was a midlife crisis. She was about 40 years old and already had confessed to making out with a 20-year-old young man. Once she became a firefighter, EMT, she decided it was a lot better to have sex with, quote, boys half her age than me. This went on for about two years. By the time she finally confessed it all to me, she'd had sex with three of her, quote, buddies, including her boss, who really played on her disenchantment with her marriage and apparently made it quite easy to move things forward. So with that background, and I really don't think because of her past, I ended up getting emails and messages from everywhere, such as Facebook, Instagram primarily, and later WhatsApp and Hangouts. None of these I sought after on my own. They came to me. 
of course, because I hadn't had any kind of marital relationship with my wife, it was what would be called a perfect storm. Depending on how you would look at it, it was really a case of being at the right place at the right time, or being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I will leave that up to the world to decide on that one. When you're 61 years old, giving all I can into my side of the marriage and not having anything reciprocated back, believing that marriage is 100%, 100%, give and take, I was all in, while she didn't seem to care enough to give anything to me. Sex? That has now been gone for the last four plus years. Celibacy wasn't in my plans at all. I could go on for several more pages about how all that happened. This one woman who took me for about $5,000 literally came out of nowhere. Again, I wasn't even looking as she came to me on Instagram. Almost right away, she started to send me nude photos and videos. Both were a bit more professional than your standard pictures taken by a cell phone. I questioned that. Quote, have you ever done any modeling? No. And wow, then I took it one step further, and without getting into the reason why I asked the next question, by chance are you in porn? No. Already, there were two red flags that I kind of brushed off. Here, I was taking the word of someone I'd never met, seen, or heard of before. In the mental state I was in, everything I could have wanted to satisfy my built-up lusts were almost like a dream come true. My wife had had three-plus affairs dating back to 1998 to 2001. I, nor we, ever went through counseling for this. Ironically, all the signs and feelings were there to drop her to the curb and tell her not to show her face around our home again. But, mistakenly, I chose to stay in the marriage with her because all three of our daughters were under the age of 16 at the time. But, fast forward to current times with this woman. It became the perfect storm, or maybe also being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Either way, it was a huge mistake. I felt like I was 16 again with hormones on full speed ahead. Then the money requests started coming. First small amounts like $25 to $40, which then sometime later became much bigger, $100 and more. The most I sent to her was $1,200 at one time. I by this time was borrowing from my children and my sister. Each time I thought I had a solid reason for it a lie, as well as a way to pay them back in a short period of time. All of those repayment ideas was based upon what this woman told me would be when the money she said she would pay me would show up. It never did. I'm sure the question comes to mind, how did you sneak all of that money by your wife? Well, I had a business account that I put money I made from side painting jobs to put to putting all the money I was making donating plasma into my own account. My wife made it easier to do as she said all the money I made painting and donating plaza was mine to spend, and that I did. As far as family members I borrowed from, all kept it a secret because they trusted me, their dad, for all the reasons I said I needed the money for. After about six months, maybe a little less, the light started coming on. Call it inspiration or just luck, but I started to doubt everything she said. The stories she told made it easier. But to throw a curveball into this was her promising she would not only pay me back all the money, but later upped that to all of my money plus about $12,000. Even though I bought that hook, line, and sinker, my doubts continued. I stayed in it with her as I started to see how all the money I had sent her would soon be replaced and nobody would know the difference. So I thought. My wanting to stay with her was all driven by this time by the money she was supposed to send me. I was an idiot. I soon found out she actually was a porn star. In fact, a very famous and rich one. It's amazing the things you can find on Google search and YouTube. It was all right there. I gathered all of that together and confronted her with it. By the way, she lived in Houston, Texas, so there wasn't any physical contact. She flat out denied all of that. She wasn't even a good liar. 
Even though the money being sent to her stopped, her texts, to me, didn't. Even though I blocked her, she added new phone numbers as well as using social media sites. It was crazy. She even tried to offer she would fly to where I lived to call it, uh, let's consummate the relationship. Oh, hell no. I wasn't going to let that happen. And it didn't. Almost a year after it started, I put an end to it. Did I feel guilty and stupid? Yes and yes. Will I end up telling my wife about it? Yes. When? I don't really know. Added to all of this, and you may have already figured out this part, our marriage has pretty much been on life support since her affairs. I was, for about the next 8 to 10 years after her affairs, was staying in the game until our youngest graduated. Now we are empty nesters. We are still together. I wouldn't call it a 42-year happily married relationship. We are more roommates than husband and wife. I still get offers from women about, gee, I am a single woman and I saw your pictures on Facebook or Instagram and you are sure handsome. Those kinds of requests. Fortunately, I get out of that before it can get started. Lastly, one other factor that I swear had something to do with me going down the wrong road about was about five years ago and I voluntarily left our bedroom. My wife, in order to send the don't even think about asking me for sex signal to me, she would line up extra pillows we had and would line them up like a wall between us. After a short time, I challenged her on that. Her flimsy excuse was, I don't like you breathing on me. True word for word what she said. So, pent up sexual needs weren't and aren't being taken care of. Soon after that happened was when I started looking at porn, and just like I was being a 16 year old. I was sleeping out on the couch for about three years of that until our middle daughter found out about it. Why did I bring this up? I had heard some time ago that sometimes it's a good thing that, for different reasons, couples should not sleep in the same room. I will promise you this is not entirely true. Depending on how it happens, it starts building distrust almost right away and more harmfully opens it's itself up to things happening that shouldn't, such as in my case. Once I tried to bring up and I told her I'm tired of living like roommates, no response or change since that time. Yes, we need to either fix this marriage up after 14 plus years or become one of the growing numbers of couples who are described as gray divorce victims. So there is his story. And he does talk a little bit about how his wife was unfaithful. And that story will be coming up on Patreon later this spring, as he sent it to me recently. And I need to go through and edit it a little bit and get it ready for the show. So yeah, it can happen to anybody. And I know that um, there are a lot of people, and I've mentioned this before, that feel ashamed about it. And it it happens. You know, most people have their hearts and they're, they have their hearts in the right places. And they're thinking, I can find love this way. Some people are not computer savvy, very much. And they struggle with that and can be easily fooled. Um, a lot of trust, they trust that these people are good people. Why would somebody lie to me? You know, those kinds of things. One thing that I do have a question on. So um, sweetheart swindler story number two gentleman who sent this in let me know if you wouldn't mind is you confronted this person with who she was um, with the proof and she denied it now my question to you is did you ever do a um, a video chat with her and the question or the reason for the question is because just like in the female version of this, it's somebody else's photos. It's somebody else's um, names and things like that. And, you know, if it is somebody who is famous, they have their pictures available online. People can steal them and change them and alter them. And if 
you hadn't ever actually actually spoke with her or did a video chat with her, there would be no way to totally verify this person is who she says she is through these pictures. And those pictures very, like I said, could be, um, they're stole, or they had been stole, I can't even talk, stoled. They had been stolen from online where a person takes these things and then manipulates people. And they truly think they are talking with one person when behind it, it could have easily been like in the last story, somebody um, who's scamming from Nigeria, a man, you know, all those kinds of things. So it's hard to know for sure, even though you think you found her, you may not have because that scam goes way back. It's, it's other people. Um, so if you haven't listened to my female story, I suggest you go back and listen to that. And you can understand how things um, can be easily manipulated online. It's not like the days where you had to dial up a phone number and, um, you know, you actually met people in life and see what they are. These people can change and manipulate and hurt anybody they can for money. And it is so sad. Oh, so message me if you have more information. I'm just curious on that. And, uh, Thank you so much for sending this in. Um, you are human. We make mistakes. End of it. You know, it is what it is. And we all learn and move forward. So thank you again so much. You have been listening to Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity. Your support of the podcast is truly appreciated. Be sure to visit my website at rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com to access story guides, subscribe to Patreon for bonus episode of the men's side of female infidelity, and to vote for this podcast to be in the Hot 50 Countdown for Podcast Magazine. To submit your story for the show, share feedback, or if you have a Let's Ponder suggestion, please email it to rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com or send by snail mail to Rebecca Adams, P.O. Box 821064, Vancouver, Washington, 98682. Every story is always anonymous. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review the show. Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity is produced and edited by Rebecca Adams. You can follow the show on Facebook at Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity, on Instagram at Podcast Raw Truth, and on Twitter at Raw Female. Thank you again, and be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself, and always remember, no judgment. Goodbye. Goodbye.